Hello, my name's Hazel and it's my mission to help you have a happy, healthy digestive system. Now our body communicates to us through symptoms, so I think it's really useful to understand what is where in your abdomen. So in this short video, I'm just going to give you a guide to the anatomy, because once you have an awareness of what could be causing you some discomfort, it will help to give you some clues as to how you can um, rectify it. So when you swallow your hopefully very well chewed mouthful, it goes down your esophagus and into your stomach and your stomach is under your left rib cage. So once the food has churned around in the stomach and, and that's where the proteins start to get broken down, the contents empty into the duodenum, which is the start of the small intestine. And the duodenum is sort of located round about in the middle there. So once the food is in the duodenum, the pancreas, which is just slightly below the stomach, releases digestive enzymes, and the gallbladder releases bile, which helps to break down the fats, and the gallbladder is just slightly over to your right as you're looking down, and then your liver really sits under your right rib cage. So it can be quite useful just to feel along underneath your rib cage and see if there's any discomfort there. And quite often the uh, common place for ulcers is in the stomach or in the duodenum. So if you've got any sharp pains there, you really need to get them investigated. And sometimes it can feel like a very intense burning pain. So once in the duodenum, that's where the process of digestion and absorption really takes place. And the small intestines sit in a sac in the middle. So the food takes quite a few hours to get through here. And there's a massive surface area just to enable all the digestion and absorption to take place. And this is quite commonly where people feel bloated. So if you feel at the end of the day that your tummy goes from being flat in the morning to being bloated, almost like... Um, you're, you feel pregnant, you know, that's quite often what people say, they feel like they're five months pregnant or you feel like you've gone up a, a clothes size. It can be because there's uh, something going wrong in the small intestine. So what can help with that sometimes is digestive enzymes or what I'm seeing more and more commonly these days is that fermentation takes place in the small intestine and it's not really designed for fermentation. Um, and that can cause massive bloating and massive buildup of gas. So once the uh, food has gone through the digestive process, it empties into the first part of the colon. So the first part of the colon is, is round about over here. There's a one-way valve called the ileocecal valve, so that lets the contents from the small intestine into the colon, that stops the waste in the colon backing up into the small intestine. Now the first part of the colon is called the cecum and the cecum uh, has the appendix just right on the end. Now I think it's really interesting to note that what we used to quite often describe as a grumbling appendix was actually issues with the cecum because again this is an area where uh, things can get really fermented um, so that can cause pain over here. So the cecum then goes into the ascending colon and then it dips around the side here and that's called the hepatic flexure obviously because it's right next to the liver and then this is the transverse colon so the transverse colon kind of goes between your rib cage and your belly button and when the colon is very very sluggish this is where a lot of people feel discomfort because if you can imagine when we're sat down this is the bit that gets really scrunched up and if the waste isn't emptying properly, it really backs up all the way around here. Uh, and quite often clients say that um, it makes them feel really, really full. So um, often on a colonic, if the, if the colon is really full, once it starts to empty, one of the signs that uh, people relay back to me is that they suddenly start to feel really hungry. So just kind of be aware of these things that are happening. So the transverse goes along here, and then it dips round again to the splenic flexure, so because the spleen is, is situated over here. 
So it's really interesting to know that actually sometimes a lower back ache, which is more around to the side, can actually be due to a full colon. So then we go down to the descending colon and then into the sigmoid colon, which is the last bit. And then it has to do a massive loop to go around into the rectum. And then it's the rectum where the stools are held before you need to have a bowel movement. And of course, we've got quite a lot situated in here because you've got your bladder, then your womb and then the rectum. So there's a lot squashed into a small space. Um, and the other sign of a uh, full colon is to feel is when you feel really uncomfortable lower down on, on both sides. So, as I said earlier, it's really good to pay attention to what part of your tummy is causing you discomfort because it will help you to um, really just empower yourself to, to kind of get it working better. If you've got anything you're very concerned about, it's always important to see the doctor. Otherwise, I'm very happy to help with um, advice. So you can contact me through my website or through my Facebook page.